It's time for Morning Rounds, our look at the medical news of the week. Scientists may have made a major breakthrough in the fight against breast cancer. In a study published this week in the Nature Journal, researchers from the University of Southern California and Yale University were able to teach a computer to better identify the nature of breast tumors. The hope is it'll help doctors speed up diagnoses and open up treatment to more people worldwide. Dr. David Agus is a CBS News medical contributor and the lead author on this study. He's here to tell us more about it. David, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. Tell us about the findings. <laughs> so we had a hypothesis that how the cells, the breast cancer cells, are arranged on a slide was a reflection of the biology. And the human eye is good at seeing patterns, but computers, machine learning, AI is so much better at that. Yeah. So we took breast cancer, half of them had an on switch called estrogen receptor, and half didn't. And the computer could pick them out. So right now, if you're a woman with breast cancer, you have a biopsy, they have to stain that. A Couple weeks later, they tell you the results and they tell you your treatment. Yeah. The beauty now is that literally you can scan this slide in and instantaneously know how to treat it. Costs are down, time is down. Think of it, for third world medicine, literally it could be done overnight. You could see in the picture here, you know, on the right, this is digital. This is done with a computer identifying which are the cells versus doing a long molecular process to identify them. So AI is going to transform how we diagnose and how we treat cancer. You've called this the beginning of a revolution. Is that because the computers are learning or is there something that this might unlock as far as other treatment op options? Well, right now it's saying which are the genes on and off, but going forward it's going to say who's going to respond to what drug. Uh, so it's all there, that information. Yeah. Now we can unlock it. And the main thing is the computing power we have today is staggering. That cell phone is what a, a supercomputer was a decade ago. Yep. Now it's being unleashed to basically help us fight cancer. And so the tech world, the Silicon Valley progress is helping us in our field treat patients better, to live better and live longer. It's very exciting. One of the big issues with breast cancer detection is the frequency of all those po false positives. So will this new technology, will it, will it reduce that number? So the idea is, yeah, when you get a mammogram, there's something there and they say, oh my gosh, we gotta do a biopsy. And some of them turn out not to be breast cancer. A lot of stress, a lot of procedures that aren't needed to be doing. So that same concept of using machine learning or artificial intelligence on a mammogram can be done. I mean, humans are good at pattern recognition computers are better. Yeah. So this is going to be an explosion in our field that are really going to change how we treat men and women with cancer. Fantastic news for people going forward. Our next topic, we hear a lot about expanding access to health care, but that may actually not be enough. A new report in The Lancet this week looked at the impact of health care quality on mortality rates. The study covered a two-year period. It estimates that in low- and middle-income countries, 5 million people die every year because of poor quality health care. And that's more than 3.6 million people in those countries who die from not having health care access. So some are getting access, but it doesn't help. There was also an editorial arguing that increasing access to health insurance isn't enough. How do you explain all of this? So the first is, and I think this is really important, is why we should care is that Council on Foreign Relations did a report two years ago showing that if non-communicable diseases, heart disease and cancer, are treated better in Africa, it helps our economy. And what we're seeing in this study is really important in that it's not just access to care, it's doing it right. So it's not just what you do, it's how you do it. Education and training, both at the patient and the physician level, are critical, especially in developing countries. And so we can't just give aid, we have to make sure they do the right thing and get these diseases treated, because we can prevent and delay heart disease, cancer, and some infectious disease in these countries, right. and we're not doing it well enough. What other solutions are possible? Well, you know, if you look at it today, is that that computer, that computer can also be involved in treatment. We can use it to say, hey, did you do X and Y and Z, and have a checklist. And so those checklists can actually help us treat diseases better. So instead of just sending the pill or sending the vaccine, let's put in a checklist and figure out ways to actually do the right thing in the patient so they can live longer and better in these developing countries, which in the long run, again, helps us. Because everyone says, why does it matter to me? It matters to us. I could not do anything without my checklist. <laughs> really good point. Finally this morning, a plea for plain English. You may not always understand everything your doctor tells you. Well, this week, a Royal Medical Academy in Britain urged doctors to summarize in simple plain English 
a patient's visit to the office and the recommended treatments for their condition or illness. For example, the guidelines say that while chronic means a long-standing condition, many patients think it just means bad. So doctors were urged not to use it. I totally disagree. I mean, this is going to hurt our ego like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> My business is about multi-syllable words. Yes. The longer the word, the more important and smart I look.